as uh, I think it's not more than uh, 15 minutes or maybe 15 to 20 minutes is what uh, have been told by um, the organizer. Um, okay, thank you everybody for attending uh, this uh, colloquium, uh, SRG, SERG colloquium, where this is an informal venue where uh, we want to discuss or share about the uh, your research. Um, so for me, actually, I just uh, to play safe, you know, I put this title, a review of some trends in software engineering research and practice. Why some trends? Because it is not so comprehensive or exhaustive. Eh? So I don't want to be challenged by you about the uh, exhaustive or threats of validity. Eh? Um, so the thing is uh, what I'm going to talk uh, today, uh, I split into two. One is a software engineering research. It is not systematic literature review, just a brief analysis. Eh? So due to the time constraint, I just managed um, to get the uh, to uh, uh, do some uh, analysis on IEEE transaction or software engineering just for 2020 uh, issues. Uh, it is about 59 papers, um, and then also IEEE software about the 2020 recent issues. In eh? try to see what topic has actually um, have been discussed or popular uh, been discussed. Okay, so a uh, larger part of my presentation. Uh, is about the uh, software engineering practice. I want to share some of uh, observations uh, from uh, these two projects that uh, uh, are, um, me and my team uh, involved. One is KB MRT project, Clam Valley MRT2 project, this one for software quality assurance, and then SME HIP1, uh, this one is a Mampu project that involve uh, 17 agencies. K MRT2 have a 12 software modules. And the cost, the total cost of the software, it is not my concentration fee, uh, it is just a total cost of KV MRT2 is a, uh, 620 million uh, ringgit. And then uh, for SME HIP1 is 23 million. Uh, uh, my consultancy is uh, maybe 0.0001% from that cost. Okay, uh, so, uh, I will go very fast uh, to make sure that the time is under control. So based on the trend, uh, so how I do it, uh, you can uh, challenge the threats of validation, however, but this is only the, due to time limits. Uh, I just uh, go through uh, very quick all the uh, 59 papers, and then I exclude some of the editors or whatever is not uh, have a research result. And then um, I think I exclude about three and then uh, I do some uh, keywords. Eh? Uh, I split into um, uh, the approach, the proposed approach, and then the major topic. Eh? So I use this bo both of these uh, uh, major topics, uh, and then this approach, and then I put in this uh, what we call the word cloud, eh? and then it's uh, produce something like this, so that we can see what is uh, frequently appear in the uh, paper. Okay, but the software testing, because uh, this is a, a main topic, so it's covered by a few papers uh, that produce. So it, we can see that the uh, software testing, comprehensive testing, uh, the team management also, uh, we found some paper, and then uh, DevOps, CBSE. So uh, that is the uh, the number of uh, topics that's uh, getting popular or uh, that's uh, frequently frequently appear in the uh, transaction of uh, software engineering. Yeah? Um, we have also recommender systems, continuous integration. Continuous integration is under DevOps. Eh? So, um, so I think uh, I don't want to go into the detail. Actually, I also have a column of uh, the proposed approach and then also the validation techniques or methodology that they use. Uh, uh, but due to the time constraint, I cannot do some analysis. So this is about the things that um, uh, Actually, some of this field exists. For example, software testing exists uh, uh, more than 10 years ago. Uh, but now, um, uh, what we call the, the things like DevOps, uh, and then we, we, we will see later in the uh, attribute software, uh, AI based, everything. So, if we uh, analyze the proposed uh, solution uh, for each research paper, uh, that's one uh, I didn't do it. I didn't do that, but I noticed that. Uh, more machine learning uh, uh, or AI based uh, is used uh, for the solution. Okay, so that is about the attributed transaction of software engineering. And then based on attribute software, the magazine that's uh, um, normally uh, 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 we read. 
So I subscribe the hard copy of this and so that he would post it to me. So this is a must read uh, magazine for software engineers. And then we can see that the few issues and the first issues this year is about design thinking and then uh, go to software engineering in society. And we see the DevOps and then uh, AI effect as E for AI blockchain. And then the, the final one, I have received a soft copy, but I can, uh, sorry, the hard copy. I received already the, uh, I can see the soft copy on the IEEE Explore uh, behavioral science. Eh? So the thing that's, um, I think design thinking, I don't have, uh, um, uh, maybe some of the members in this group have uh, experience in design thinking. But I, uh, I think design thinking is also important for the software design and then the requirements engineering uh, as well. So uh, for the software uh, engineering society, um, actually is uh, how to can we um, uh, do some data mining or identify some requirements eh, from uh, the sentiment analysis, everything. Eh? Also like a behavioral science. The, uh, the thing that's, uh, I think, uh, uh, the technical part uh, that we need to focus DevOps and uh, AI effects eh? as E for AI. As you know, that it's now is uh, IR 4.0 and then a blockchain and smart contract. So because uh, this one, actually, when we meet the industry, um, um, the, entry, the industry also emphasize on this eh? blockchain uh, uh, the, and, and AI. And so we have also AI. So for example, AI, uh, testing the AI software, uh, is challenging because uh, it is uh, not uh, it is undeterministic. Yeah? So for for the problem in AI, yeah? so there is a many. So so uh, normally we have to produce something like Oracle or uh, test Oracle. So something that's um, um, also we utilize the machine learning. So this is quite different from traditional software where we can write the test cases based on the very well defined and then it's very predictive uh, model. So for AI, it is uh, less predictive. For blockchain, um, it is uh, like uh, um, smart contract uh, developments. Um, uh, the blo blockchain software engineering is also getting popular the tech to test the blockchain. So many, uh, I think these two together with DevOps, uh, these three area, uh, is a good topic uh, where we, we want to uh, further uh, extend the area of software engineering. Eh? Because in software engineering, we have, um, uh, we will continue uh, with uh, software engineering um, uh, body of knowledge. We have a requirements engineering, we have a software design, but this one is, uh, the, the, we cannot ignore this because it's uh, the direction as we know that the uh, the our this country also Malaysia because uh, some participants also not from Malaysia. We have um, uh, IR 4.0 industry forward. That's a policy that we go for OR, AI and blockchain. Eh? Um, so that th that is the uh, um, the direction that uh, we should go. Um, so next, um, I will go to the software quality assurance testing and practice. So as mentioned earlier, that's um, I will just share the experience. Uh, it's about the um, uh, uh, the experience of uh, involving with uh, the two uh, this uh, two project. So Dr. Adaham, Dr. Razia is also uh, is a part of the project uh, in this group. Um, so uh, for the software quality assurance, uh, software testing, and the SME hit one uh, actually. If you see here in Malaysia, they have a regulation, independent VMV. If a government pro, uh, for the government procurement of the software, more than, I cannot remember the amount, um, it's uh, maybe 1 million. Um, I try to see participant, Dr. Hisham. Yeah? Dr. Hisham uh, remember that figure. Um, so he's not here. Okay, um, so uh, they, uh, uh, the, the, the software contractor uh, required to um, uh, appoint the independent verification and validation. Uh, so this one, uh, you can get uh, IVMV status in the two ways. One is uh, through TMMI, uh, test maturity model. And then another one is through the accreditation uh, used under ISO 17025. Um, uh, so the IVMV, you can make money because uh, is a regulation government must uh, uh, sorry the contractor must appoint IVMV. Uh, so this project is a uh, 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 
uh, in this project, we develop the testing. We use the test link uh, to develop test cases and then produce a test report, do some uh, triage on the uh, defect. And then uh, it is always engage the um, uh, customer. So the next one is uh, this is this example on the right. Uh, this is the example of the document that we uh, uh, we produce as a group. So I'm the one who signed off this uh, software quality assurance plan and used by this uh, uh, project. And so uh, this this uh, this plan uh, together with other plans. So we also have software configuration management plan, software verification and validation plan. And then uh, also we have to review, uh, do some review on the SRS and SDS, software requirements specification and SDS. So there's a lot. So uh, at the beginning, uh, we involve, um, uh, at the beginning, we involve with the um, uh, EN, using EN5128. Uh, this one is for railway. Uh, later, the SIL2 is given to independent safety assessor, and then now, uh, we using ISO 12207. That's one is for uh, software uh, life cycle, development life cycle. So this one is 12207. Um, so in this uh, SQA project, uh, we based on the contract, rules, regulation, laws, and so the, must comply with the contract. So the contract is uh, five volumes. Uh, each volume is about 1,000 pages uh, for this project. So this, the requirements uh, manager will convert all the requirements to all the, uh, uh, the contract. Uh, into the requirements and then uh, start the traceability from there. So my job is just to make just to make sure that everything is done. Uh, it's easy, easy, easy. It's just a small rule, uh, but the big uh, impact. Um, so this project is actually still active. Uh, so uh, since two thousand eighteen, and then we'll end uh, next year. Okay, so this is uh, actually SQA and testing in uh, practice. Eh? So when you use SQA, you will uh, I don't want to explain in detail because this is not a lecture about SQA, but I think you know about the uh, the process requirement, product requirements that you have to check based on the standard and procedures, the plan, software requirements, and then produce the, the reports. Okay. Um, so this is uh, just a few uh, environment, the scenario. Uh, this one is our audit at MWI, Metropolitan, Metropolitan Wireless International at Singapore. So the people from Bangalore so go to Singapore. So we do some audit on their uh, system. They develop uh, the uh, CAD computer added dispatcher for train uh, CAD software. And then this one we've been audit uh, the um, the bottom left. Uh, and then Alan Kaski is actually from Gamuda uh, auditing us uh, as a Sapura. This one we audit MWI because MWI is our customer. And then this one is a SME HIP1 project where we do the um, user acceptance test here. Yeah? And then after that, we directly go to defect triage yeah? to see uh, the. So this is uh, the, the operating room in uh, Mampu, uh, uh, Cyberjaya. Then this one, we audit the recording. So actually, there's, uh, there's uh, many uh, activities uh, involved uh, in the last uh, few years for this project. And then um, the last thing uh, uh, is about the research grant. So the three grant is uh, related to the SME one, and I still have an active grant. If you are local students, uh, I need also um, somebody to finish using IIG grant where I want to uh, produce a template for SQA. Um, and then this one is uh, for MRT, it will end March from 2018 and 2021. So sometimes the job is done on Friday right? because Friday is a weekend uh, for Johor Bahru. Okay, uh, so I think uh, it is uh, very fast, eh? uh, but uh, because it is the first colloquium, maybe um, uh, we will have a better discussion with some uh, experiments or results from research uh, next time uh, for the next colloquium. Maybe Dr. Dayang or other members of uh, Dr. Adham uh, will present some uh, significant research results. For me, I think uh, that is just an uh, overview about the direction. It's still open for discussion. Uh, anybody can give uh, opinion um, to uh, support uh, or to uh, give us additional uh, info, information about this uh, presentation today. Okay, uh, with that, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, listening to my talk.
Okay, back to Dr. Aziza. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Dr. Wan. Uh, so, from the member floor, any questions for Prof? That, or any discussion? Or your opinion, whether you want to ask the questions or you have some um, input or something to discuss from the members? If there is no discussion, we can proceed to look money. Okay. So no questions. So if there is no question, we move to the next session where the uh, for the Luqman presentation. So Luqman, can you share your slide? Okay. Okay, you can start Luqman. Everyone can see the slide. Yes, I can see the slide. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. Uh, welcome to the presentation. My name is Muhammad Luqman bin Muhammad Shafi'i. My supervisor is the person. Suara slow, saya tak dengar saya. Hello, hello. Yeah, the volume is too low. Test, test. Okay. Okay, better. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, uh, my supervisor is Professor uh, Technology Dr. Wan Muhammad Nasir Mokadir, the person that has uh, given the sharing earlier. And my research title is Model Based Test Kit Generation and Prioritization Using Combinatorial Testing and Cost Condition Approach. Uh, so a little bit uh, introduction about myself. I'm currently doing my PhD and now it's in semester three. So I'll be doing my proposed defense this, this semester, which is actually next week. So as I guess this is some um, kind of mock, mock presentation uh, before my defense. And if anybody has any feedback or comment about my presentation or research, uh, feel free to share them. Uh, for this uh, research progress presentation, uh, I'll be explaining my research proposal, which is what I had done so far in my research. So in this presentation, uh, I, I try my best to make my presentation colorful and less wordy as possible, so that those uh, watching will not fall asleep. <laughs> because I know this kind of presentation uh, may be not very interesting. So I hope you guys don't fall asleep, fall asleep at the end of the presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually the structure of my proposal. Uh, but in this presentation, I'll be going through only uh, some important parts so that everyone can get an overview of what I am doing. So here we can see there are uh, just a minute. So here there are six chapters in my proposal. So let's go first into the chapter one, which is the introduction. So in introduction, uh, we have seven subsections. Uh, let's, let's first go into the overview. Here are some of the overviews for those that might not be familiar with these topics. Uh, these are the main, main topics related to my research. Uh, we have software testing, the phase where software is tested uh, to determine whether the, whether the software fulfills specified requirements and to identify faults or defects. Uh, we have test case generation, uh, the process where test cases are generated, and also we have test case prioritization where tests are reordered according to a purpose, such as maybe uh, the purpose can be like early fault detection. So, uh, so the tests are prioritized according to this, to this purpose, where tests that most serve 
the purpose are given high priorities. So here are the three main uh, main topics in my research. Uh, and then we have the problem background. As can be seen here, there are three main problems. Uh, the, the, the test case generation, test case prioritization, and empirical study. Uh, we have, and also the third level is actually a kind of a flow from top to bottom. Uh, manual. So first, we have manual TCG, model-based TCG, and lastly, the limitation in model-based SK generation. So I just make this short. So no, no story short. We go straight to the limitation here, which is the model-based SK generation limitation. So from my uh, literature review that I've done, uh, I've identified that uh, the limitation in current MB model based test generation is the manual test, test manual generation of test data. Okay, so usually you use uses manually defined values or random values. Uh, that is the limitation that I found in the current model based test generation existing approach. And next is the regarding the model based test case prioritization limitation. So almost all existing studies did not address different test cases cost. Uh, why, why is this? Uh, I, I identified this because most approaches utilize metrics which assume similar test case cost and possibility. So we will we'll discuss that limitation uh, further in the uh, chapter two, uh, literature review. And the last, uh, last limitation is issues in existing empirical studies. So here we can see that most studies utilize a few case study. Uh, the proposed method are not applicable. Uh, many uh, papers did not report their empirical result completely. And only a quarter of studies that propose new approach uh, did, didn't utilize any metric that measure the post performance. So here are some of the uh, evidence of issues in the existing empirical studies. So that is the issue with the problem background. Next, we go to the problem statement. So the main research question uh, in this uh, up here, uh, contains all the three identified problems that I have I have stated earlier. Uh, so the question is how to empirically improve the effectiveness and efficiency of testing by enhancing the manual to data generation in model based uh, TCG and addressing distinct, distinct test cases cost in model based TCG. So we can see uh, the keyword is uh, enhancing the manual test data generation, uh, addressing distinct test cases cost and applicably, so that, that is actually the third, the third problem. Uh, so at the bottom is the, below are the more specific research question for each problems, okay? So we just continue. Next, we have, we have the problem statement. Uh, next is the, Study objectives, sorry. So the these objectives are determined based on the listed problems stated uh, just now. So the study objective of my research is to propose an MB TCG enhancement with automated and data generation. Second is to propose a cost cognizant MB TCP enhancement that addresses different test cases costs. And lastly is to evaluate the effectiveness and efficiency of these two approaches using suitable metrics, data sets, and benchmarking related approaches. So that is the study objective uh, for the study scope, significance, and outline. Maybe we are not going to do that, not necessary. Uh, next, we have uh, the literature review. 
which is the Jackdaw tool. In the teacher view, we have eight subsessions, uh, which we will go into some of the important ones. We will not go into all of them. Uh, so the first one is about model based testing. So this is a typical process in model based testing. We have uh, model construction, destination criteria, and so on. So first, Usually in model-based testing, we will construct model. Uh, the model which is built from, uh, usually if, uh, the model is built from informal requirements or specific specification documents or the SFP. Uh, here you can see the, the model, model, which is built from the requirement. And then the second step, we have the test selection criteria. So the test selection criteria uh, drive the automatic test cases generation to produce a quality test suit. Uh, for example, uh, test selection criteria uh, would be uh, maybe state coverage or transition coverage, something like that. And then we have test case specification that formulas the, the notion of test selection criteria and then the demo personnel. And after we have the test case specification and the test model, we use both of them to generate the test cases. As you can see here, the test cases, the test cases are generated that aims to satisfy all of the test case specification. And after that, we can execute those test cases. That's a little bit about model-based testing. And then we have a standard finite state machine. Uh, so here, uh, this is the model that I use in my research. Uh, so I review uh, this model in the literature review. So a standard finite state machine, uh, usually uh, the most important components are the states and the transition. Okay, so state. Uh, can be interpreted as the current values of a set variable that SUT is having. For example, in one of the state, uh, this variable could be one, and in the second state, the variable could be two, something like that. So that is one way to uh, interpret a state. And then a machine can only be in one of the finite number of states it has in a single time. So in, in the time, in a particular time, uh, a machine can be in one state, not in uh, two or three states in the, uh, the same times. And also, uh, EFSM also has uh, the transition, which uh, change a machine from one state to another. So each transition, uh, we have, uh, each transition has uh, an event, conditions, and a sequence of actions. So, just, just a minute. Okay. So, in the in a transition, so this is the event. For example, the pin, the pin is entered, and the condition is paid. Uh, the entered pin is not equal to the actual pin, uh, and the time is less than three. So that is uh, uh, the conditions and the sequence of actions. Uh, if if this uh, condition uh, evaluates to true, when this uh, event is occur or occur occur, uh, then the action uh, will be action of the transition will be executed, which is the error at ten plus one and from four pin again. So that is some introduction about the standard finance the machine. And then we have uh, the review about model-based TCG. So the review in model-based TCG is- Sorry, Lukman, uh, can you make it in the slideshow? Because it is, I think that is your view. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, sorry.
Okay. Okay. So okay. now, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, I didn't realize. Okay. So the the review of model based TCG is uh, based on or which are uh, type of approach uh, models use. Uh, evaluation metrics use and uh, the limitations. So the categorization uh, of type of approach is based on how tests are generated. You get a general idea of how existing approaches implement the generation. Uh, review based on the models use. So utilize, utilization of system model is essential in MBTCG. And different models supply different information. So distribution model use is done. And metric is necessary to quantitatively evaluate an approach and helps in making a wise conclusion. So the metrics are also reviewed. And lastly, the limitation in the existing approaches uh, that will be addressed in this research is discussed. So we we'll go into them briefly. So in types, type of approaches. So this is the the, graph, the bar graph of the approach type uh, from the existing studies that I, I have gathered. You can see that most of them are state-based, coverage-based, model-checking-based. So these this are uh, how they generate this case. Okay. So also we have the review for models use. So these are the models uh, that are used. You can see that most of the studies use this finance state machine. Uh, so I, I clustered these three together because they uh, basically they are the same, but only the name are different. So we have uh, the model that I, uh, that I use in this research, EFSM. So the diagram we usually see activity, class sequence diagram, and so on. And then we have the evaluation metric use. So these are these are the common metrics that are used by the existing studies. So most of them use test size, test generation time, number of four, uh, and so on. And then we have the limitation of the existing study itself, which is the important part of this review. So the limitation in model based TCG is that is the need for manual effort and manual inputs, effort, focus or test data. So here are some of the examples from uh, uh, example from the existing studies. Uh, uh, require manual intervention, set down the scenario, manual specifying domain input, uh, require test worker to be made with the manually. And then we have the manual generation of data, data. So actually, uh, this two is uh, some kind of a connection. It's, it's not, not two limitation. This is uh, more specific. So the manual generation of the data, why usually the test data is manually generated in model based TCG? This is because uh, the tests generated from SUT models are usually abstract. So this abstract test, they, to be executed along the SUT, they need to be computized. And one of the computization process is generating test data. So usually this, uh, this process use uh, random values or manually done. Okay. So that's the limitation in modern based CNG. And then we have the review for modern based TCP. Uh, for the model based TCP, TCP is quite the same. Uh, post model use, uh, evaluation metrics, limitation. So we we'll go into uh, briefly into each of them. You can see here that for MBTCP, most of the approach use requirement specification base and so on. And then we have the models use. So most MBTCP studies use EFSM and remaining, remaining other models. 
and then we have the evaluation metric hues. So from here, we can see uh, that so this matrix, uh, most of them uh, assume that the test case cost and fault severity are the same. So this metric. So this is where uh, we identified the limitation in current model based test case prioritization. Okay, so for the limitation, so as I said earlier, none of these studies address different faults, severity, and test cases cost. So this is determined based on the evaluation matrix use. And the connection is that uh, why is this is a limitation? This is because it is uh, a possible threat to the construct validity. So why is why is that? Because the study objective for example, is to evaluate the effectiveness and efficiency of the approach, uh, but the prioritization approach uh, prioritize test, uh, test without considering the test case cost and forcibility, and then utilize metrics that assume identical test case cost and forcibility, such as the average percentage of fault detected FFD. So don't that metric uh, assume similar test case cost and possibility. But however, in practice, uh, effectiveness and efficiency would mean consider also consideration of the cost and also the impact of the fault. Okay. In real life, we will also want to know uh, what, what are the costs of tests uh, before executing them. Okay. So that's all for model-based TCP. And then we are going to combinatorial testing. Uh, I'll explain a little bit introduction about combinatorial testing. Uh, uh, combinatorial testing is reviewed because this technique is used in our proposed approach. Okay, so combinatorial testing is the technique that tests an SUT using a covering array test suit. It contains all the possible T wave combinations for parameter values. So here is an example of an of a covering array. Okay. So the property of covering array is that it requires that each combination T way of parameter values to, to appear at least at least once. So here you can see that this is the parameter operating system, processor, protocol, and these are the values two possible values. For operating system uh, parameter, we have window and Linux, processor, Intel, AMD, protocol, pv 4 PVC. So each parameter ha has two possible, val possible values. So what it means to each uh, combination to appear this one is that, for example, Windows and uh, Intel combination. Uh, so here, the covering, covering array is for two, two way two-way combination, or we can call it uh, pairwise testing. Okay, so for two-way, so for two parameter values, uh, it need to be uh, covered at least one. For example, Windows Intel, Windows AMD, Linux Intel, Linux AMD, uh, Windows IPv4, PVC, something like that. So this in this covering array, all are covered. Okay, the advantage of combinatorial testing is that for an SUT with three parameters, it's having two possible values like this one. Uh, exhaustive testing, which means uh, the testing all possible combination require eight tests. But with uh, CT only using pairwise testing only require four tests. Uh, so we can see that here uh, the, the difference is not too big, but for a larger system with huge number of parameter possible values, the reduction will be significant. And then there is the uh, covering of the construction method. We have computational and uh, algebraic. Uh, uh, I think that's the, uh, the parts that I'll be explaining. Uh, the remaining will not be discussed in detail. Uh, that is all for literature review. And uh, next, we go to the methodology of the research. In methodology, we have five subsections. We have 
so we will first go into the operational framework. So the operational framework uh, shows the flow of the research. So we can see here the, the, where the research, research objectives reside in this framework. Okay, sorry. So let me zoom a bit. So here we have the first and second objective which are to propose an enhancement in MTCG and MTCP. And the third objective, which is the evaluation of the proposed enhancements. So we have five phase, phases, to review, public analysis, design construction, evaluation, and lastly, result dissemination. So that is the operational framework. And then we have the research framework. So the research framework shows the association between the identified problems and the proposed solution, or in other words, the objectives of the research. So here we have three problems and solution. So the first problem is about the manual test data generation and the solution to propose an enhancement. Second problem, most existing MBDCP approaches did not consider the test case cost. And we, we will call propose an enhancement for, to address that. And the third problem uh, in existing studies where the evaluation is not done, is not done properly. And uh, we address that too. And uh, we, we look a little bit in the diagram. So here you can see the first problem is regarding the manual test data generation in conventional model-based uh, TCG. Okay, so as you can see here, the manual test data uh, is combined with the abstract test cases to produce the uh, to produce the concrete test case or the collectively the test suit, conventional test suit. Okay, so this is the the first problem. So our research, the so the proposed solution is here. We take the abstract test cases and the uh, information available in the model in the model uh, and then we do some processing in our proposed enhancement then we, we, we can uh, gener uh, generate our proposed enhancement test suit uh, without uh, doing uh, without using manual test data okay so that is how we propose to address this problem and then we have the second problem in the existing MBTCP is that they prioritize test cases without uh, considering the test case cost. So our proposed solution is that we take the, this is number one, this is a connection here. Uh, we take the standard financial machine model and the proposed enhancement generated test suit. We take them into our proposed enhancement, then we, we prioritize test cases, and then we generate the uh, prioritize the suit, the enhancement prioritize test suit, compared with the uh, existing uh, approach prioritize test suit. And then for the test execution, uh, the requirements will be used to create the system under test. Uh, in this research, uh, we use the uh, leaf, uh, leaf system, uh, leaf system, SUT, which we will uh, explain later. And then uh, the SUT will be will be un un undergo the mutation mutation analysis, mutation analysis to produce faulty versions. Okay, so for uh, each fault, each mutant for each faulty version. Okay. After we create that, then we can do the test execution to test the regenerated test suit and the generated prioritized test suit. Okay, so the if, uh, then lastly, we can calculate the effectiveness efficiency evaluation, which is the third problem and the third objective. Okay, so then the research framework. And then we have the case study. 
that I use in this for this preliminary experiment. Okay, so the case study is the uh, leaf system. Uh, the specification of this model is taken from the existing study, so we did not uh, create this on our own. Yeah, uh, this uh, so this model is created using uh, an, an MBT tool uh, named Test Optimal, which I'll, I will discuss uh, later. Okay, next we have the metric that I use to evaluate the approach. Uh, okay, for for this for this proposal, uh, I use the mutation score that measures the effectiveness of the suit in terms of fault detection. Okay, meaning that the uh, a test suit is to see whether uh, how well uh, the test suit detects fault. Okay, so mutation. Mutation uh, analysis uh, resemble real faults typically made by programmers. So faults are introduced by making synthet synthetic changes into the original CT. And this process can be automated using tool. So the tool that we use, we will also discuss later. So this is the calculation for the mutation score. We have T represent the system of the test. Uh, T, the test will be used. Uh, KM, the number of kills. Mutants by the test suit for that particular SUT uh, divide by the total number of mutants minus total number of equivalent mutants. So equivalent mutant is uh, equivalent mutants are mutants that uh, produce uh, same behavior with the original SUT, meaning that uh, they cannot be detected. Okay, so we cannot use that mutant, so they need be, they need to be discarded. Okay. Okay. It's for mutation score. And then the instruments that uh, we use for to assist the experimentation. Uh, there are two tools. First is test optimal. Uh, test optimal is an IDE model based testing tool for test automation. Uh, it uses a uh, finest machine, but can be extended to EFSM by incorporating conditions into the transitions. And another tool is the MuJava for the mutation uh, analysis, uh, one of the common tools for performing, performing mutation analysis. Okay, as the name suggests, uh, it is used for Java programs. Okay, uh, we also made some comparison with other similar tools to, justi to justify why a particular tool is used and not the other tools. Okay, so for MBT tools, uh, we, we compare with also other tools. Uh, and these are the features, the features. Uh, and then the mutation testing tool, uh, we also compare with uh, similar uh, tools. The Java test. Example. So the reason why I choose uh, this, these two tools uh, uh, is uh, explained in the proposal. So not, not going to detail. And then, uh, and then uh, that is all for chapter three. And then we have the proposed enhancement. So this is the framework for the proposed MBTCG. Uh, for the MBTCT enhancement, uh, the framework is not ready yet because in this proposal, in this proposal, we uh, focus to achieve the first research objective, which is to propose the MBTCG enhancement. Okay, so this is quite similar to the uh, research. Framework that yeah, I have shown earlier. We have mentioned test pass and all of that. I'm not going to detail into this one. And then we have the preliminary findings, chapter five of the preliminary experiment. So here we have four succession. The first one is the fault seeding. Uh, so 
as explained earlier in the research framework, the leaf system is uh, undergo the mutation analysis. Uh, it is injected with mutants using Mujavatos. Okay, so here are the operators operators that where mutants are generated. So for example, this AOIS is uh, arithmetic of operator session. Uh, uh, ROR's uh, relational operational uh, replacement. So the meaning for this abbreviation, uh, uh, the ref reference for the meaning of the uh, abbreviation are shown in my proposal. Okay, so in total, uh, there are 700 plus mutants that are generated by the Mujava tool. Uh, but uh, we cannot uh, execute them all because of the high execution cost. Uh, okay, and then for that, we use the mutant sampling method. Uh, we choose a quarter of the total mutants, which mainly 25% were randomly picked. Uh, so based on the as is, uh, previous study, a random selection of 10% mutant is only 16% less effective than utilizing all the generated mutants in terms of mutation score. So this is uh, an acceptable trade-off between mutation score effective reduction and the amount of work reduced. Okay, so this mutant sampling method is uh, not uh, is still effective. Huh? Okay, so after we we do the mutant sampling method, we we get uh, this total mutant, and after that we identify the equivalent mutants. Equivalent mutant and discard them. So a total of 43 equivalent mutants were identified in the book. And then after that, we have the generated test suit. So as, as we can see here, uh, I compare between two approaches. The first one is the conventional MBTCG, and the second one is the proposed MBTCG enhancement. So for the conventional one, uh, a total of 10 test cases were generated. So how they how they are generated? They are generated by simply executing the constructed model, the leaf system model that I shown earlier, uh, using the optimal sequencer provided by test optimal tool. So the optimal sequencer will generate the least number of most important tests that can cover every transitions in the model. Okay, so that the uh, hundred percent transition coverage. Uh, and then for the proposed enhancement. Excuse uh, me, Dr. Man. Uh, I think you have five minutes more. Uh, that it's already 40 minutes. I can. I think you can uh, somehow uh, speed up until the end. Okay, okay. All right. So for the proposed enhancement, we have uh, 53 test cases. And then uh, the data generation, this is for the proposed enhancement. Uh, this is the actual test data. Uh, so this process, uh, maybe I not, will not explain further. And then we have the result and discussion. Okay, for the result and discussion, uh, as you can see here, we have, you can see that uh, for the proposed enhancement, the mutant kits are more than uh, the conventional MTCG. Okay, so for that, the mutation score for the proposed enhancement will be more than the conventional MBTCG. Uh, why is that? Because the enhancement improves the test data used for each test. So it's done by integrating the boundary value analysis strategy and transition leveling condition. So this actually the detailed step we, not, we, we did not uh, discuss that. And the conventional MTCG was unable to detect this fault because mainly use random data. Uh, but somehow the test suit of the proposed enhancement is larger than the conventional. So the proposed enhancement 53, uh, conventional only test 10 test cases. Uh, why is that? Because the enhancement takes the test path from the conventional MBTCG and split it into several test paths. Okay, as you can see here, I rewind back. So here is one test path for the conventional MBTCG. And lastly, uh, after we done the implementation for the enhancement, 
uh, seeds, quantity are seeds, that's part will be generated. So that's why the Popoy Asman generated more test cases than the conventional one. And also this, uh, this is one of the reasons why this research also proposed an enhancement in MBTCP because we will prioritize the large number of test cases to improve the fault detection. And then lastly is the conclusion. So the achievements of, the, of this research proposal is in the literature review, the manual test data generation, the current MBTCG and non selected MBTCP address different test case costs, the proper enhancement, the great CP into generating test cases, made it possible for the test data to be generated automatically, and the preliminary experiment, the proper enhancement of perform the conventional MBTCG. However, the test size is larger. Uh, we can conclude here that the first research objective is achieved. And for the future works, uh, we will be focusing on the second and the third research objective, which is to propose the MBTCP enhancement and to conduct a full experiment to evaluate both uh, enhancement. So that is all from, from my uh, presentation. Okay, thank you, Lukman. Uh, it's almost 40 minutes. <laughs> so I think uh, normally in, uh, I think for the proposal defend, it's uh, for the presentation, I think it's normally 20 minutes, and I'm not mistaken. So I think you better to squeeze some of uh, uh, some of the in, in uh, the slide or uh, you have to try again uh, for the I mean, um, for to fix 20 minutes because you start at 2.50, just 50 just now and uh, we end at 3.30. So it's almost 40 minutes. Okay, so uh, before me, uh, is there any questions um, from the student or members? Um, question from the chat or uh, if you have a problem with the your mic you can <laughs> ask uh, in in chat <laughs> okay um, uh, from dr norani could you summarize your problem statement and the research gap of your study look mind Okay, so my problem statement is this gap. Uh, so the first problem is regarding the model-based test case generation. Okay, uh, the research gap is about the test data generation in in the test case generation of uh, model-based testing. Okay, so that's the first research research gap. Uh, regarding the manual test data test data generation, and the second research gap is regarding the model based test case prioritization, uh, which is uh, almost all of the existing uh, studies uh, MBTCP studies did not address the different test cases cost, okay, which is identified based on the metric that they use, and the last last research gap is regarding the empirical studies uh, that are done. So most of the existing empirical studies uh, are incomplete. Uh, some may uh, did not compare with existing approaches, uh, did not use uh, public data set, something like that. So uh, we want to address that by making a, a, a good, a valid empirical study. Uh. Okay, so that's it. You have that in your slide uh, for that problem statement and the gaps. Uh -oh. Okay, okay. Let me you show it. Uh, you not include it, right? Uh, the problem statement. I can see there. There is slide, 
but uh, I think it's not clear about the gap. <laughs> so this this is this is the, the gap. This is actually the gap. Okay. For MBTCG, for MBTCP, and the third one. All right. Okay. Uh, another questions from Hamiza. Um. Uh, just want to ask why did Lukman not include uh, Mac OS within pairwise testing? Mac OS, sorry. Uh, why why Lukman not include Mac OS within pairwise testing? Okay, so that is just an example. Uh, you can use any anything. Because the example you uh, mentioned the windows, right? Ah, yeah, yeah. Just an example. Okay. Oh, yeah. There, right? The, 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 the table, I think. Uh -huh. Which one? Uh, just an example. Okay. Hmm. So another question from Dr. Johanna. Uh, there are many TCG techniques, but, but why you choose uh, CT? Okay, so uh, there are the justification, but I did not include it here. So maybe I just, just show. So actually, I have listed the justification why I use the cities, but I did not include in this slide. And just a minute. So here are the justification. So you can see the first one is because it, uh, implementation can be automated. And then because or MBTCP, TCG complement each other very well. It is so, yeah. this one. Can you make it one, one page? Because it is right now become two pages. Okay. <laughs> okay, the second one, the third one, can reduce the size of the generated test the explanation. And lastly, because only a few study use. Uh, so there is a ju the justification in your this uh, uh, your report, but then I think you better uh, uh, prepare a hidden slide. Uh, for for example, if there are questions from the examiner, uh, then you can just uh, use that hidden slide to 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 uh, prepare yourself for the justification. Okay, okay. So I think you you can include it, but. Uh, because you have to squeeze the, the, the slide for the presentation. So some of the slide you have to somehow uh, hidden that, but when the question rises, so, so you can uh, use that hidden slide to, to justify, I think. Okay? Mm -hmm. okay. All right. All right. The, another question. Uh, can we apply your fight from the Mushtaba? I think Mushtaba is from uh, Germany, right? <laughs> So uh, we have a friend here from Germany. Can we apply your findings? Can, can we apply your findings for real-time environment? If yes, which OS for uh, real-time you use? Uh, real-time environment, uh, I'm not sure yet, uh, I did not. Uh, so go. now your case study is just the, 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 the elevator is real time, right? Elevator. The, the leaf, uh, you, you are using leaf system, right, for the case study? Mm. Uh, in, in real life, it's real time, but. That, that, yeah. That's a real time, right? Yeah. But in this experiment, I have uh, set the value for which floor, which. Yeah, that. But then you are not uh, focusing on which OS that you use, right? Uh, no, no, not focusing which OS. 
I think it's outside the scope. Uh, uh, for the real time features, it's not considered. Yeah. Right. You can do the example, it's like real, real time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think that, I think as uh that is not the uh just just the mustaba want to know yeah. if you are using uh any os for that real time for this case study okay so another question may uh from the diawudin uh may i just clarify that your research focus only on test data generation or is it applicable applicable for configuration testing as well like the example you shared just now on the intel Etc. Uh, configuration testing. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, the combinatorial testing is used for configuration testing. So, configuration testing, uh, they test uh, many different possible values, right? So, combinatorial testing is suitable uh, for configuration testing. Uh, but this question. Uh, Maybe maybe applicable. Maybe can use uh, this. Uh, the enhancement can be used for the configuration testing. Okay. All right. So thank you for the questions. Another questions from Dr. Shahliza. Uh, could you describe the relation between cost cognition and MBT in your research? Cost cognition and MBT uh, to relate. So, how the cost cognition and MBT relate is that uh, in this here. So, in the model, so how I want to do this enhancement. So from the model, uh, I will, uh, for after the abstract test cases are uh, uh, generated, uh, I, can, I will identify which test case uh, is more expensive uh, or more or less expensive. For example, by looking at the number of state uh, and transition uh, test cases, uh, test case uh, drivers. Uh, so that if if a test case uh, go through more state and transition, it will be more costly. Something like that, for example, to adjust the cost condition. Okay, but but that is not uh, not final yet. The implementation for the uh, MB, MBTCP is not uh, finalized yet. Oh, so it's about uh, expensive, um, meaning uh, it's related to the cost. So I'm, I just want to know cognizant is what, what, what is cognizant? So meaning that you, you want to check or you want to identify the less cost, meaning cost effectiveness in your test case, lah. Is it? Ah uh, yes, ah uh, yes. Cost cognizant is actually like cost, cost based. Cost cognizant is like cost aware, something like that. Okay. Do you do you uh, describe the keyword in your uh, first slide? This keyword, uh, which because it's in your title, cost cognizant. It's in your title, but I uh, maybe I miss it. I miss it because I I didn't did I didn't see it in your first slide, in uh, in your introduction. Introduction. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh, so. It helps if you put it there because it is it's in your title. Oh, okay. Just a suggestion. <laughs> oh God. Uh, initially, I just put uh, some general general topic. Maybe I put it later. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Shaliza, for your suggestion. So I think because you are using that keyword in your title, but uh, we not you cannot see in your. Uh, slide for the introduction. What's the cost cognition uh, for the introduction, right? So, mm. uh, so I think the keyword is somehow reflect what should be in your content, right? Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah. So, 
thank you for a uh, question any other question so so for for uh, i just want to somehow uh comment uh, or for the suggestion for the improvement uh, your slide uh, i think for your literature review uh, there are a lot of uh, you have a lot of uh, techniques uh, for the testings but then mm, i think uh, you have at the end of those uh, the, you you uh, you are review reviewing one by one of that technique but i think it's better to have one slide to summarize all the uh, the the technique so somehow like uh, summarize in the table something like that uh, what is the 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 uh, uh, advantage or whatever uh, uh, limitation for for each of that for each of that techniques I think it's better to have uh, one one slide to summarize all those things instead uh, right now you are uh, discussing it's one by one right okay uh, that that is related to your literature review. Um, and I think uh, some of the justification, for example, um, justification that you mentioned of the tools that you use, I think you can have at least, uh, because during the presentation, you, you mentioned that you, um, uh, the, the justification in your report. So uh -huh. we have to, we have to, uh, look at the report but somehow it, you just can highlight uh, the keyword of the uh, why you are uh, during the present maybe you can say why you uh, uh, choose that that uh, that tools right uh, there is in java up ready uh, so why you choose that uh, just highlight at one 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 simple statement i think is okay okay because during the presentation uh, uh, normally, uh, as we know, want to know why you choose that, <laughs> so that will be asking later on, right? So I think it's better to have that, lah. And I think for the presentation, when you highlight for the objective, for the something the important important keyword, uh, I think you better highlight the uh, the keyword. For example, when you uh, show your your objective. Uh, or the problem, uh, maybe you can, okay, something like this. So uh, this is too small. One of the, 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 the uh, I'm not sure which one that you want to, to focus, whether the, the icon or the objective. So I think uh, the objective is that one that you want to highlight, right? So make it bigger. And then uh, I think uh, the, the keyword the the important keyword you better highlight in red or something like that okay so that we look at this uh the slide we know that is that is the the important part that you want to to to, to make it work okay okay all right uh any other from the members any other constructive comment for the lookman before the proposal defense or first assessment. Mm -hmm. Any okay. So Prof Prof Dr. Wan, you want to want to make some comments or conclusion for the Lukman presentation? Okay. Oh, okay, there's no conclusion, but just to congratulate uh, Lukman for very uh, uh, detailed work, so hard work have been done uh, uh, in this topic. And then thank you very much uh, to everybody who give a suggestion to further improve uh, uh, Lukman's work. And then also thank you for Dr. Azil uh, for hosting uh, uh, today's colloquium. Okay, that's all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So thank you, uh, Lukman. Uh, if there is no question, so beautiful slide design from the Hamiza. All right. Uh, before, uh, so I I hope uh, good luck for the Lukman for the first assessment. Hopefully all going well and smoothly. All right.